There are some of us that when we get sick, we immediately call his name, but we don't call it right. Because if I call his name out of fear, then I'm not truly operating in the anointing that he's given me. This is how some of us call. The doctor says, you know what? Uh, I don't know what it is, but we see something in there and it looks like it might be cancer. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's not it. But when they say it looks like it might be cancer. First of all, it's not a definite. Which means I got time to rename that thing before they actually name it. So when they say it might be, I can counterattack that with it isn't. In the name of So I can't call his name like I'm about to die. I got to call his name because I know I'm going to live. Which means when they say cancer, I look back and say Jesus with a smile on my face because I know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, God, help me get in this place. The Lord began to reveal and begin to deal with my heart and said, from now on, Jonathan Miller, you and your big head yellow self, I don't want you on your face studying for a greater revelation than this man than that man than this woman than that woman I want you to talk about my name because my name has lost its glory in the earth people do not understand that when you call my name demons still tremble people do not understand when you call my name cancer must submit HIV must submit diabetes must submit children will be saved oh God help me here when you call my name we'll leave here today and we'll go home and we'll be afraid because we feel spirits in our house and something's in here with me and I don't know what it is and, and you laying oil and you dumping oil all over the carpet and you got garlic over here for the vampires and, and you got steaks over here for the werewolves and you're all scared but those of you that feel something in your house that should not be in your house if you got the Holy Ghost step inside your house and if you ain't got no olive oil you can grab some butter it don't make no difference all you gotta do is call his name and say the blood of Jesus right now Say get out of my house. I ain't gonna be in my house scared of you. I ain't gonna be in my own house. The name of Jesus has lost its essence amongst men. I don't want to get in trouble. But even some of, even some of our gospel artists, most gospel artists don't sing about the gospel. How you gonna have a song about somebody you don't even mention their name in? Don't give me a birthday present that says to whom it may concern. If it's for me, put my name on it. But then we wanna write songs about hold on, you can make it. How can I make it? Not just by listening to your song tell me to hold on. How can I make it? The reality of it is, we worry too much. Well, these thugs out here on the streets, I don't know how we gonna get through to them. All these prostitutes, I don't know how we gonna get through to them. All these drug dealers, we gotta find a way. You ain't got to find nothing. The Bible says all you got to do is preach Christ and Him crucified and declare that He was raised up on a cross. He didn't say when you find a revelation, I'll draw all men. He said if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. I don't need... God help me in this place there are methods and they are good there are techniques and they are good but the foundation must be the death the burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ authority was given to man I'm preaching now authority was given to man in the beginning of time for the earth is the Lord's and the what the one is thereof the universe is God's Everything belongs to him. But he gave man dominion over the earth. In other words, what he said was, I own the building, but this is your apartment. Once you sign a lease, your landlord does not come in your apartment. They do not move your furniture. 
They do not tell you who you can and cannot have in your place. As long as you go according to the lease, they don't interfere. Now, if that being the case, the Lord says the decisions and the inevitable decisions of the earth will be based on man and what man allows. Don't get mad at your landlord when you're the one stuffing all kind of stuff down your toilet and toys and tapes and CD, and then the toilet get clogged up and you call, landlord, the toilet broke. You broke it. Adam is given the authority. He blows it. There comes a second Adam. Anybody know the second Adam? Uh, Jesus. A second Adam that comes, but this establishment is the name that is given to this second Adam will be a name that is dominant to every other name. Because a name is the label that describes, defines, or establishes who you are. When you are born into the world, there is a name given to every last one of us. Some of us have names that mean something. Some of us have names for a mother who coughed when she had you. Shock quickly, and that's what it is. We all have a name to define who we are. If I want to get Dale's attention, I call him by name. If I want to get Brother Motley's attention, I don't call him, I don't say Lester because he's not there, he's over there. So if I want Lester's attention, I call his name, but I need to make sure because when I say his name, he won't respond because that name doesn't define him. Y'all with me? Now this name that was given to this man, his name was Jesus the Christ. Christ meaning the anointed one. Now when you're dealing with Jesus, you cannot deal with the name of Jesus without dealing with the anointing attached to it. Because the anointing is what destroys the yoke. See, good preaching will break the yoke. Good singing will break the yoke. Good church will break the yoke. But anything that's broken can be put back together again. That's why you get, oh, oh I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like I got loose from sin today. Well, you got loose from it, but the tide was only broken. When you get the anointing, it doesn't just break the yoke. It destroys, obliterates, and makes sure the devil can't never put it back together again. Holy Ghost help me here. So now we have this name that's established in the earth, the name of Jesus. And the Bible declares that it is the name that is above every other name. What is the significance of the word name? Name not only labels and describes me, but name also means authority. If I had a black marker right now and I walked in the back of the church and nobody knew who I was. And I came down with a big black marker and I sat down on the steps. Now remember, none of y'all know who I am, okay? You don't know me. And I sat down on these steps and I start scribbling on your carpet. Immediately, somebody on the security staff better run over here and snatch me up off this carpet and check me and put me in my place because I'm operating under my own authority, but my authority does not rule in this house. But if I'm scribbling on the carpet in a black marker and security runs over to me and I hand them a note that says, signed by Bishop Clifford L. Frazier, YPJ can scribble on anything he wants to scribble on in here. I now have authority not by my name, but by because Bishop Frazier's name is the name that rules in this house. He's the president of this corporation. So that means in order for you to cross me, you've now got to go through him because he told me I could scribble on the carpet. When a person who has authority, is, oh God help me in this place, gives me authority, I now have just as much authority as them because they gave it to me. When Jesus said you can lay hands on the sick, when Jesus said that the dead would rise, when Jesus said you can have joy, when Jesus says you can have what do I gotta say to y'all to get you to understand you got power 